Hey guys, it's Spaces Sins, and we are back with more My Next Life as a Vampire. Continuing Chapter 2. Our girls stay out on the boat. So, girls stay, well, out. But we're not really going out. We're staying on the boat, because if we go out, we'd end up in the ocean, and that'd be soggy and wet and salty. Although, I hear there's a hot pirate floating around somewhere who might save us. You know. Wait, no, he's supposed to make us walk the plank. So we fall in the ocean. Well, I guess it's not going to work. Anyway, we're having our girls' day. <laughs> uh, the four of us then went to the gallery lounge, and then to the communal bath, and, and I'm so I'm sorry for all of those who... Those of you who love the girls and wanted your lady bath scene, you're not getting it. By the time we finished, we were ready for a break at the restaurant. Phew, I'm so tired after all that. Yes, it was very fun. The meal bath felt great. Today's been such a blast. Mary must have felt dizzy in the bath because she covered her face most of the time. That's because she was too busy swooning over you. Oh dear God, it's hilarious. But we all had a lot of fun. We enjoyed looking at the art pieces in the gallery as well. It was a great girls' day out. But that was unforgivable. Who knew that people from Quid could be so rude? Mary's words reminded me of the incident just after we left the library. His name was Lord Frederick, was it? What did he say about the demon of hot dog? Uh, what? Do you mean the demon of the fog? Oh, yeah, that's it. I never heard that phrase before. What could it mean? The demon of the fog. What an interesting conversation. I heard an unexpected voice. Turning around, I find Jordo, Alan, and Nickel. Prince Jordo, did you finish your business already? Yes, I made quick work of it so I could, sec so I could secure some time with my adorable fiancé. You're like, who? Oh, right, me. Did you really need to hurry that much? Fucking me. I got a lot. Okay, I'm sorry. I love how corny this game is, and I love that everybody is fighting over us, including our lady friends. Like, I don't know. Like, stroke my ego a little more, game. Like, everybody? I mean, like, everybody is in love with you. Except for Frederick. He hates everyone. But you know what? You'll probably, like smack him, and then he's gonna magically fall in love with you, too, even though he's a side character. I'm just saying. I don't know what kind of magic aura we're producing, but I enjoy it, okay? So, I'm, to be fair, in every Atome game, like, everybody's always in love with us, but they're not this blatant about it, you know? They're basically dry-humping our leg, and she has no idea what's going on, and I love it. It's so fun. So what are this so what is this demon of the fog? Do you know about it, Prince Jordo? Yes, though I've only learned of it recently. It refers to the captain of the Weiss Pirates who have been raiding the Blanc Sea. Ah. Uh. You had to know the demon of the fog. There was a, something in my brain when he said that I was like thinking like, are we talking about our uh, pirate boyfriend? <laughs> like, just because, you know, I didn't say it and they should have because here you go. Pirates? Yes, he's said to have superhuman strength and eerie eyes which glow purple in the white sea fog. We saw those. White sea fog? Yes, there's a section of the Blanc Sea that's always covered in fog. Many victims' first warning are those violet eyes shining in the fog. That's how the name Demon of the Fog came about. Sounds like something out of a storybook. I'm sure it's just been exaggerated as the rumors spread. It's just like Flowery Lady embraced by the sea! How wonderful! Either way, it usually targets Quidian merchant ships. This liner isn't a merchant ship, and it falls under the protection of Sorcier. Right, we'll be turning back before entering the Blanc Sea, so I doubt we'll encounter him. over here. I'm not 
whistling for no reason and looking suspicious and sweating a little. I have no idea that there's a pirate on board the ship already. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, because I played the game. I really haven't played the game. This is my first time playing the game. But we already know he's on the ship, so it'd be like being Katarina and be like, Well, I played this game already. I know it's going to happen. But she hasn't played this part. This is apparently the fan disc that, you know, that was made from the book when it was like, that part was cut. And she's like, oh, that seems interesting. And then she forgot about it in her dream. So they made it into a fan disc. So it's obviously what we're playing right now. <laughs> oh, now that they mention it, I guess I heard something like that. Part of me wants to see the pirate's shimmering eyes, but it's probably better that we don't encounter him. I don't know. I actually think it'd be great to see him because he's pretty sexy. Oh, and my computer volume. Because, you know, Norton keeps popping up with a bazillion things. Still, Violet, huh? That sounds familiar somehow. Well, I must have imagined it. I try to rack my brain, but nothing really comes to mind. Literally me every day. I'm convinced I imagined it. The Quidian Navy's trying to catch them, but the pirates are always a step ahead. The progress toward their capture has been slow. Oh, I see. Since Lord Frederick is a Navy Admiral, he must be particularly frustrated. Ah, oh, so that's it. That's why he was so aggressive. Seeing Sophia's unique eye color when his frustrations were already boiling must have triggered an overreaction. Also, she's a woman, so... Well, not that it makes it okay. Sophia's so sweet and cute, too. But just my just as my anger is about to reignite, I notice that someone's missing. Hey, where's Keith? Amongst the ladies, we've got Maria, Mary, and Sophia. Amongst the gentlemen, Jordo, Alan, and Nickel. But Keith's nowhere to be found. I haven't seen him. Me neither. I haven't run into him. I haven't seen him either. Actually, what was Keith busy with in the first place? Hiding from the ladies. I thought he probably had some work to take care of, but considering the other three are here, it doesn't seem the case. Uh, maybe it really is love. My mind starts to wander in the possibility, wander in the possibilities, but soon the servant attending Keith arrives at our table. Excuse me, Lady Katarina, I have a message from Lord Keith. Huh? From Keith? The servant hands me a letter in Keith's handwriting. I quickly open it and read. Just text us, bro. He's like, yeah, just send me a text. And he's like, oh, well, you, I mean, you know, a note. <laughs> Never heard the phrase te text, which is, just... <laughs> where have you been hanging out in the library too much, I guess, Keith, whatever. And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, because we've been isekai into this world, so we know what text messages are. It says that he felt ill and went to the infirmary, so there's no need to worry. What? Keith is in the infirmary? Huh? The infirmary? Does that mean he's sick? Maybe he got food poisoning. That would be so tragic. And they're like, it's okay, I'm sure he'll be fine. No, I mean, then we can't eat the food. Keith will be fine, whatever. No, it is in all likelihood seasickness. Seasickness? Well, that explains his lack of appetite and strange attitude at the party. Yeah, because the thing is, is like if you're on like a boat, you're like rocking, you can, like a normal boat, like a small boat, you'd feel it. But on a cruise ship, you're feeling the movement, but you don't realize that you're doing it. Because you're like, I'm standing stationary. But no, you're fucking not. You know what I mean? I assumed he was feeling fed up with work, but he was trying to endure his nausea. What, sh what should I do? He might be suffering right now. As his older sister, it's my duty to nurse him back to health. Oh yeah, that'll make him more stressed out. I'm going to the infirmary. Then I'll go with you. I'll go too. Me too! No way. It'd be a mess if this huge group all entered the infirmary at once. You're right. We're all worried, but going together will only make him feel guilty. Better for Katarina to go alone. Oh. Jordo's little pissed face is adorable. Right. It's a shame, but I suppose we should refrain from joining. Isn't that right, Prince Jordo? I think it's just funny because he's our fiancé, so of course he's going to leap to come. Because he's in love with us. And then Mary's like, fuck you, I'm not going to let you alone with her. Bastard. On her first. <laughs> <sighs> he 
Yes, it appears that way. Ekaterina, I will see you later. I'll be escorting you to the party tonight. Please wait for me in your room. Oh, Prince Giorno, unlike the first day, I've heard that there's no need for an escort for today's party. If a lady of Katarina's caliber enters the venue without an escort, who knows what rumors could spread? You must know that. Oh, we'll be well. I'll be by your side. Keith, I'm coming to you now. She's like, the fuck is wrong with you two? She's not listening at all. Yes, it certainly seems that way. In any case, I have to go and check on Keith right now. It makes me worried that he's sick enough to be infirmed. <laughs> I say goodbye to everyone and hurry to the infirmary. Right. As I run to the infirmary, I see Keith just about to swallow something. Keith! <laughs> hey, s sister we're not at home right now. You shouldn't be running. Look at him in his little pajajays. <laughs> it's like old man cardigan. I love it. Keith! Thank goodness! You are well enough to be up! D sister, stop this. I run up to give him a big hug, but Keith holds out his hand to stop me. Since it seems I must say this, I will. A noble woman shouldn't go around hugging people when watchful eyes are around. And at the speed you were moving, I've I would have spilled this and caused a scene. Oh! Keith smiles wryly as he points to the teacup on the side table. I didn't notice the teacup when I entered, but all else had been pushed from my mind as soon as I saw my adorable brother. Oh, I did notice, sorry. But I'm glad he seems well. He still looks a bit pale, but he has enough energy to lecture me now. I feel a rush of relief, but still, I can't help but worry about his pale complexion. I sit down on a nearby chair with a slight bow. I I'm sorry, Keith forgot where we are. And I hadn't realized you were feeling sick either. I'm really sorry, Keith. It's fine, sister. I didn't want to worry you. I'll be better after I get a bit of rest. Keith hadn't been able to sleep his nausea off, hadn't been able to sleep his nausea off, so his servant became worried and took him to the infirmary. I feel much better after resting at the infirmary. See, I'm well enough to drink some herbal tea now. Keith glances at the teacup with a smile. So it was herbal tea that he was drinking. Keith, are you sure you're not pregnant? Do we have to have a conversation? The Tomei Kittens guy does say he's breedable, so I'm just saying. Did, who touched you? Who do I have to have a conversation with? Which one of these whores knocked you up? <laughs> Listen. Till I don't think I'll be able to attend tonight's party. So you're so you are feeling bad. I'm terrible for not noticing my brother's illness. He always has everything together. I never imagined that he might get sick. And then a laugh cuts through my depressive malaise. <laughs> you siblings are so close. Huh? I look up and notice a lady resting in the next bed. She smiles gently as she looks my way. She's as pale as Keith. Oh, shoot. We're in the infirmary. I'm sorry for making so much commotion. It's quite all right. Please don't mind me. The lady shakes off my apology with a smile, but everyone sleeping here is sick. I've forgotten such an obvious fact. The fact that it's only the second day, and I mean, yes, I understand that, like, okay, with her, oh, she probably is seasick as well, but the other people here. How many fucking people are sick on this boat on day two? Jesus. Uh, I'd question this. I mean, you gotta figure out a big ship, the chances of... A handful of people will have being seasick, you know. But still! No! Looks at me in a way that says, I told you so. I drag the chair closer to Keith's bed and lower my voice as though to whisper a secret. So, Keith, is there anything you want? I'm thinking of staying here to nurse you back to health. Sister, take... Oh, sister, taking care of me. No, no, no need. I, I think that might be too much for me. I love how in love with you he is that he can't handle the idea of you taking care of him. You're that sick? And no, it's not that. Anyway, I'll be fine. And you're much too close. Keith's complexion is red as he tries to squeeze away. I realize I'm leaning into him. Right, I shouldn't be on a sick person's bed. I sit back down and look at Keith again. So can I get you anything? I can go to the kitchen and try to get some food for you. And no, the servant can do that for me, so it's all right. 
Besides, isn't it about time for you to start preparing for the party? Huh? It's already that late? Yes. You didn't get to properly eat your fill yesterday, and you were looking forward to seeing what would be on today's menu. So don't worry about me. Go enjoy yourself. Heath. To be honest, I'm still so worried. I can tell when he's serious, so I reluctantly agree to leave. That's right. It'd be hard to rest and relax if someone's always... Someone is w always watching him. I don't know why I couldn't read that. All right, then I'll make my rounds and greet everyone in your place at the party. And no, there's no need for you to do that. You just make me worry more. Um, sister, just participate as you normally do. And don't go anywhere alone with strangers or Prince Jordo. <laughs> is Prince Jordo the whore here? <laughs> like. Also, don't overeat, and make sure not to leave the venue alone. Stay with Lady Mary, Lady, S Lady Sophia, and the others. He really is Mother's son. It's kind of funny, considering the fact that you were adopted. Yet you clearly inherited her genes somehow. Heath continues to list out rules, one after another. But the ship suddenly sways in the waves, and Keith, Keith clutches his head, seemingly hit by a new wave of dizziness. Keith, do you feel sick? It's fine. Feel better if I lie down. You just gotta get your sea legs. He still looks pale, so I softly lay him back on his bed. After tucking him in, I pat him on the forehead like I always did when we were kids. Slap, slap, slap. <laughs> like, you don't have to worry about me so much. I didn't make a single mistake yesterday. Just rest up, Keith. Sister. He smiles weakly. He's grown up so much, but this one expression's never changed. Well, soon, my dear little brother. The infirmary staff seems to be first rate, so it'll be fine. Right? I watch Keith from his bedside as he closes his eyes. Soon, the maid calls me to begin getting ready for the party. So reluctant, I leave the infirmary and head back to my room. Is this the night we get abducted by pirates? The pirates gotta pop in here somewhere! Come on! I understand why we didn't do it at the first party. You know, you gotta have, like, your eat. Like, hey, we're hanging out, everyone's fine we're having fun and then the pirate comes in and keith's not there to protect us and he's gonna feel guilty about that so no <laughs> it's finally time for the party i was short on time my worries about keith exacerbating the issue but when all's done i look the part in place of the bedridden keith jordo is escorting me today seriously like i know it's the next day and it's another party but like why are we wearing the same fucking outfits? You guys are rich. You should have a plethora of outfits, okay? Like, 0 out of 10 calling bullshit on this game that these rich motherfuckers only have one outfit. <laughs> it would have been funny, though, if they actually put them in, like, different clothing every single time. Like, every party would be like, wow, they went above and beyond with the sprites. Holy shit. I mean, they've obviously changed outfits a couple of times, so, like, I'm not begrudging any. I'm not really pissed. I just think it's fucking funny, though. Like, come on. This is day two party. Like, we're going to be here for a week, and you only brought one fucking party dress? <laughs> uh, the fact that they changed the outfits at all, you know what I mean? That's always impressive to me, because sometimes you have things, and it's like, we're all dressed up, and you're like, you're not, though. You're wearing the same outfit you always do. Like, they never change them. Oh. I'll be honest. I would have said if, if they had changed it, I would have been like, wow, someone had a lot of time on their hands if they changed the outfits every day. <laughs> Actually, it would have been funny if they put each character in somebody else's outfit. Like, rotated the guys, and you would have been like, wait. Okay, Jordo's now wearing Nichols' outfit. Nichols' wearing Keith. <laughs> been great. Ekaterina, you look adorable today as well. My beloved princess. Yeah, because I'm wearing the same outfit I was wearing yesterday. Giordo seems to be in high spirits. He continues dropping cliched lines as he escorts me. I'm reminded again that he's a prince from an Otome game. I enter the venue, escorted by Giordo, and everyone comes running over. Although, you know what? To be fair to them, he's a prince from an Otome game. And we're lucky that they gave him a fancy outfit. That's also why they only have one dress or one suit. They're characters from an Atome game, so of course they're not going to have multiple outfits, because who does that 
when you're drawing a Tomei characters, right? You know! I know that's not why they did it, but it's a very fun, like, let's just pretend that's why. They were like, we can draw different outfits. No, 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 but there are Tomei characters, right? So they never have different outfits. You're right, so we better not. That would actually fly and be a really great reasoning. And like a really great little Easter egg tidbit. If there were actually a Tome games where they had different parties and they were wearing different like dresses each time. You know, that's never the case. If you've ever had a play to game where it's like, we have a fancy event. And then a week later, you have a f they're always wearing the same fancy event outfit. You know what I mean? So it's not like any other game does that. So, but still... I'm just going to pretend it's a nice little tidbit. They were like, <laughs> see? They're like, some crazy bitch is going to complain that they didn't have fancy outfits. And then when we mention that they're characters in a Tomei game, they'll be like, ah, I see what you did there. That's smart. Even though we did nothing. Let me give them credit for it. It's kind of funny. I don't know if any of that made sense. Whatever. <sighs> I enter the venue escorted by Jordo, and everyone comes running over. I'm a little loopy because I swear to God, I had to spray some Febreze on something and I sprayed too much. And this was literally like four or five days ago, but it's like, I feel like it's still a little too pungent up here, even though I had the fan running all day last, like yesterday. But like, I don't really smell it as much, but I come up here and you're like, I don't know. My head feels weird up here in my loft now. Like, So I feel like it's the Febreze. <laughs> Lady Katarina, are you all right? Huh? Yeah, I'm completely fine. Thank goodness, I didn't see Prince Jordo at the venue, so I was worried. I had a sneaking suspicion that he'd be wherever you were, Lady Katarina. Please, it's only proper that her fiancé be the one to escort her to the party. I thought I stated quite clearly that today's party did not require any escorting. Lady Katarina, you look so beautiful today. Thanks, Sophia. And how is Keith? Oh, right. He looked pale, but he seemed to be recovering. That's good to hear. Don't go get your eyes on my brother, girl. Keep to yourself. We might be friends and I might like you. But out of all my three lady friends, you're my least favorite, Maria. Just because you got your eyes on all my prizes. And I'm not here for that. Watch it. It's giving her that snake. I'm like, shh. I'm looking girl. Chuck your ass off this boat. No, but I love you, girl! <laughs> I will punt her off this boat if she touches or even looks wrongly, just even glances eye contact at all with any one of my boyfriends. Don't you dare. <laughs> so he was just feeling ill. The ship doesn't, know, doesn't sway too badly, but a number of people have gotten sick nonetheless. As he speaks, Nickel glances around the party hall. It seems to be less packed than the night before. That seems oddly suspicious, though. I mean, again, a handful of people getting seasick, sure, but like, huh, that many people getting, that see like, that doesn't seem normal. Like, yeah, it's a little odd when you're on a giant cruise ship. I mean, I've only been on like a cruise once. But, like, where you go on a cruise ship and you're like, oh, like, the first day you might feel a little weird, but you usually get used to it. But this many people? I don't know if that seems a little suspicious. I know there's a pirate running around. That's what I'm worried about. As he speaks, Nicola glances around the party. Okay, we were there. Could it be that the people who aren't here today are all seasick? I don't expect that's the sole reason, but it is a factor. Uh, perhaps they're still unused to being out at sea. Speaking of which, Ryle did mention that some people can't adjust to the smell of the ocean. I don't think it's the smell of the ocean, it's the swaying. Because, like, again, if you're on a small boat and it's moving around, you're like, ugh, you might feel a little nauseous, but you're at least on a small vessel. When you're on something as big as a cruise ship, like, it's different. Because you're not seeing the ocean move. You're sitting there and you're in a stationary room. It's kind of like if your house just started swaying back and forth, like there, you might not notice, like physically, you're not like, whoa, I'm stumbling across do down the hall, but your body and your brain still notice the wobbliness. Like it's going to adjust for it, but it's probably like, oh, I can't handle this. Like you're not as aware of it in such a big, on a big fucking ship as you would be like on a tiny little ding. Okay. 
on a tiny little dinghy, you're more aware of it. Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Okay, that, that worked out. You know what I mean? Like, because you're like, oh, I'm rolling in the ocean and your whole body and everything's moving around. So, but like on a big cruise ship, you, the rocking is more gentle and subtle. So you don't realize it's happening, you know, which makes it weirder. But I still think it's odd that this many people are sick. I don't think it's the sea air either. Because then people going to the beach would get nauseous all the time. And it's not a thing. smell of the ocean or the smell of something that you're pumping in to make people sick. In consideration of that, he placed sachets in all the rooms. I like the smell of the sea, though, so it doesn't matter much to me. That's worrying. I hope everyone's all right. I've heard that the Vincium's doctor is first rate, so they'll be fine. Right. The biggest problem is the leftovers. Huh? Yes, my biggest concern is that with so many feeling ill, there won't be enough people to eat all the food. With so few people here, I have no choice but to eat and eat so nothing will be wasted. Keith did tell me to enjoy myself. Finally, my long-cherished desires will be satisfied. With so few people at the party, it should be no issue to go and greet them all later. I make a beeline for the delicacies. Wow, this looks delicious! menu's completely different from yesterday's and it all looks great. Uh, Katarina, you look really happy. Because it looks so delicious. I don't know which one to try first. The looking that her looking at food. It looks so delicious. I don't know which one to try first. Me looking at my Atome boyfriends. Oh, they all look so delicious. I don't know which one to try first. <laughs> I'll put myself in the corner later. Lady Katarina, how about this soup? It looks rather delectable. I can smell the seafood. It's supposed to be a broth of squid and shellfish. Here you go. Thanks, Mary. I take a sip of the soup from the cup and the taste of the ocean washes through my mouth. Mmm, it's delicious. And it's good to hear. Uh, Katarina, this quiche looks delicious, too. For a hot second, I forgot what quiche looks like as a word. You're right! Once I finish the soup, I'll try that quiche. Ah, uh, but this meat dish! <laughs> Lady Katarina, the salad looks fresh and delicious! Uh, Katarina, this saute is a lovely fragrance. Oh my god. Okay, you know what? You guys can keep fighting over me if you're gonna keep bringing me food. Thanks, Mary, Prince Giorno! Without so many people to greet, both of them are at my side with choice recommendations. I quickly pile the food onto my plate and head to a secluded place to eat. Mmm, mm, it's delicious! The sautéed white fish is plump and melty. The deep fry is crunchy and explodes with juice. It's all incredibly, oh, indescribably delicious. It's all indescribably delicious. I know that the food from... I can read. I knew that the food from Quid would be an incredible treat. On top of that, it's all seafood. It's dish after dish of things I could never get in Sorcier. Now that I have them, I can't stop. Poor Keith. He's missing out on such great food. I'll make sure to enjoy his share, too. I continue to eat what Jordo and the others recommend to me. Yeah, this is good. Oh, this one, too. I want Jordo and Mary to try it, too, but they're both engaged with other nobles. As expected of those two. I feel bad interrupting them, so I eat alone in silence. I go to get a drink and pick up a glass. In that moment, uh, I hit the table by accident, spilling juice on my dress. Ah, oh, crap. It's not in a conspicuous spot, but it'll be terrible if this becomes a stain. If I tell the maid who helped me dress, I think we can remove it immediately. But she might report it to Mother. I decide to go to the restroom to get the stain out on my own. My mind said I sneak out of the venue. What do you tell you don't leave alone? You'd think there'd be restrooms relatively close and leaving the venue alone to go to the bathroom should be fine. Phew, I'm glad the stain came out. After successfully blotting out the stain of my dress, I step out to return to the party hall. At least we got food before we get kidnapped by pirates. Huh. Only I don't remember which way it is. Not knowing where to go, I stand dumbfounded. Okay, girl, you cannot be this bad at directions. 
I walked out of the party hall. And, and here's the thing. The party hall should be relatively close to the restrooms. Uh, I look right and left, but haven't a clue. It all looks the same to me. Again, here's the thing. I know you, but you should be like, I turned left to get into the bath. I, when I was walking down the hall, the bathroom was on the left. Therefore, I go to the right when you come out. I mean, come on. You can't be that dumb. Well, there's no point in standing here. Let's try going this way first. I choose a direction at random and start walking. And there's like... Chapter 3. And there's like nobody working here. Bolt from the blue. Phew! I made it back safely. Wow, shock. After going to the bathroom and getting lost, I managed to make my own way back to the party room, thankfully. Hey, Katarina! I'm so glad you're safe! You were taking so long to return, I was worried sick! I'm glad you're back now, Lady Katarina! I'm sorry for troubling you, I got a bit lost. Um, where are Prince Giorno and the others? Prince Alan, Prince Giorno, and Lord Nickel left the hall to go look for you, Lady Katarina! Wow, I should apologize to them later. Maybe I should go look for them. If you need, I doubt they'll return after ex exhausting their search. And this is my chance to relax with Lady Katarina. It's all the better with all those hin other hindrances gone. I don't know how she says shit like this and we don't get the clue that she's into us. Hmm. Mary, is something wrong? Oh, she was probably whispering to herself. <laughs> this is my chance with all the other hindrances gone. Mary, did you say something? What? No. <laughs> Push them all off this fucking boat. Nothing at all. Oh, how about we have some more food? Food! Speaking of which, I was still in the middle of eating. I've yet to get my fill. I still haven't touched any of the desserts. Yeah, if I try to go find the others, we might just miss each other again. I follow Mary's suggestion here and return to the feast while awaiting everyone's return. It's a rare chance to try these sumptuous Quidian delicacies, after all. Actually, I'd say this was my number one reason for being on board. What? That's really random. Her number one reason for being on board is the food, and it's like she's never mentioned the food until literally just then. <laughs> Did you take me seriously for a hot second? Were you like, are you on... On drugs? Are you okay? Did you... Did I... Was I convincing? Was I convincing with that? I learned from the best. There's a woman I work with. <laughs> she had asked me one day about something. Like, oh, hey, can you look up this or whatever? And so I looked it up and I gave her the answer. And it was like, okay. So we talked about it. And then, like, seriously, like, the next day or whatever, she was like, oh, hey, did you look up this thing? I'm like, isn't that the thing we talked about yesterday she's like oh oh my god i'm so dumb holy shit so now it's become a running joke it's been weeks she asked me four times today i was like i'm literally gonna throw my fucking computer because she'll be like yeah hey can you don't forget i need you to look into that thing for me like so if you could do that today before you leave and i'm like you know you can't she did it one time on a call I'm like you can't do this on calls because you sound serious like it's not like oh hey you gonna look up that thing for me where the, you can tell that she's joking? Like, no, she sounds dead fucking serious. And I'm like, you're gonna say that on a call one day and I'm gonna be like, yeah, no, I don't feel like it. Knowing that it's a joke between us and somebody else is gonna be like, Spacey's an asshole and doesn't do her job and nobody's gonna get it and I'm gonna be accused of being an asshole because I told you no because we know it's a joke between us. And I'd be like, yeah, now nah, I don't feel like it. Nah, you can do it yourself. Like, I would sound like I'm joking, but she sounds dead serious. But I swear to God, she pinged me like three times today asking about it. And I was like, no. I started sending her little gifts back. I'm like, no. No. <laughs> like, I've sent her the one with the dude blinking, just like, blinking and shaking his head like, the fuck? Like, and it'll be like days. I came back. I had a day off yesterday. Like, I took the day off from work. I was like, no, fuck this shit. It was a Monday. We had all these planning meetings and they started at 7. And I was like, I'm not getting up at 7 a.m. on a Monday. I don't want to be here. So I took the day off, right? She pinged me while I was out. I come into the office this morning to, hey, can you look up that thing? I need to know. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to fucking slap some. <laughs> like, but she's so dead serious about it. Like, so, you know, 
I'm learning. I'm learning how to, like, be dead. <laughs> I feel like I've done it before. But, you know, I feel like this one was really good. Like, she has never once talked about food. So, like, that's, like, a fail on the writer's part that they're just, like... <laughs> Uh, anyway, I head to the assortment and Maria, Sophia, and Mary immediately begin to hand me various dishes. These, they're enablers. Here, Lady Katerina, try this. Lady Katerina, this dish is delicious too. Lady Katerina, this is a specialty of quid. Thank you. Um, Ask Mary for help, Sophia for help, Maria for help. Who do we ask for help? I don't think it matters. Do we get points... Uh, for Nickel, if we ask Sophia, and if we ask Mary, do we get points for Alan? And if we ask Maria, it's friend points? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it matters, so. We ask Mary for help. Okay. My hands are full, so, Mary, can you feed it to me? Oh, you know what? Okay, if we were gonna have someone feed it to us. Yeah, no, this makes sense. She just shoved right in there. Why, of course. Here, Lady Katerina, say, uh, oh, mm, this is delicious. How oh, unfair, Lady Mary. Please have some of mine too, Lady Katerina. Thank you, I'd be happy to partake. The girls feed me food as fast as I can gobble it down. I mean... Listen, I don't want a lady harem, but at the same time... I'm happy to partake in this if they're gonna feed me food and I'm just sitting here and they're just shoveling in my mouth. Like, what the hell? I, they're enabling my binge eating, which is not good. I need to, I, I don't need to eat this much. I think Katarina can get away with it. I can't, but the fat child in me, which is also the fat adult, okay, like, let's be real, um, really appreciates people just feeding me dessert because, like, you know, who doesn't want, like, a nice tasty muffin or a cookie or a cupcake or some shit? Cupcake's more modern, like, now when they have better buttercream frosting or cream cheese frostings. But, like, the normal frostings we used to have when I was a kid is just, like, way too fucking sugary. I like sugar, but it's too fucking much. I like the cake part. But I don't like the frosting part, so I never liked cake. But, like, ice cream cake? Yeah, you know what? Feed me Sundays. Do you have a spoonful of peanut butter? Actually, just give me a jar of Jif and a spoon, and I'm happy. It's fine. But, you know, I mean, like, are... Why do the men not do this? I'm craning my neck to the side, trying to be like, why? Why, game devs? Why do the men... Oh, oh, is it because the men are going to be sexist, judgmental, and misogynistic, and be like, oh, whoa, we don't want you to get fat. But the girls are like, who gives a fuck? Let's eat pizza and brownies, bitch! Woohoo! Because you know what? Then maybe I want a lady harem. I wish I could be slightly, like, a, like just slightly bisexual. You know? Just so I could enjoy this more, but... You know? Like, you know what? If, as long as they feed me, I'll close my eyes. It'll be okay. <laughs> you know, there's still a lot of food left. Maybe because there aren't as many people as yesterday. It'd be a waste to leave leftovers, so I have no choice but to bear this burden. Girl, don't you have pockets in your dress? Didn't anyone ever tell you to put, like, plastic bags, line them, you know, just to put it in your purse? Like, she's never been to a fucking buffet before. <laughs> Not that you should do that, but, like, come on. You know that there's somebody that has. We used to joke. My uncle used to joke. I was like... Was like on disability and stuff so he didn't have like a lot of money so he was really good at budgeting and being like i got a full week's worth of meals for like three dollars and like it just the magic of budgeting like you know but would always joke like yeah no i got my i got my plastic bags like a line of fill it up it takes to fall <laughs> you know what I mean? like, so like i just think of that at buffets like not that i go to buffets but you would, you're like, yeah, no, just keep going back. Shh, put some in a plastic Ziploc, put that in your giant purse. I mean, that's where you wear your cargo pants with all the fucking pockets, your baggy ass cargo pants with all the plastic bags in the pockets. You just, they're like, did, did you just gain 20 pounds? Yeah, I ate so much. And it's really just all the food in your pockets. But listen, Katarina, knowing that she's going to stuff herself and be hungry in two hours should probably have put some plastic bags in her pockets, is all I'm saying, okay? Or potion vials or whatever they have instead of plastic bags. I don't know. Anyway. 
Oh, this one is delicious too. And that one's not bad at all. I munch and munch nonstop. At first, everyone was happy to indulge me, but now they're starting to look worried. Um, Lady Katerina, are you certain you should be putting so much on one plate? If you overeat, won't you feel sick? If it's just this much, I'll be fine. Besides, we can only try these Quidian treats here on the ship. I don't want to miss out and regret it later. Yes, the cuisine of Quid has yet to find its place in Sorcier. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna have as much as possible while I still can. Ugh, it's the taste of this moment alone. As I continue to chew, I hear Maria giggle next to me. <laughs> then I'll try to recreate any dishes you particularly like, Kater Lady Katerina. Really? Alright, you know what? You're back on board the boat. I'm not gonna kick you off. You're gonna bake me food? Alright. Don't look at my boyfriends, though. Of course! Maria gives me a big smile. I feel a sudden urge to fawn over her. I had to read that fast so I could click the thing because I don't want the memory scenario to disappear. Selfishly sought happiness, so we must be Maria. And that day I was borrowing the cafeteria's kitchen again to try out a difficult new recipe. I wanted to bring Lady Katerina a dessert fancier than usual to express my gratitude. Lady Katerina seems to like my homemade sweets, but I'd like to make her even happier. I'd like to see her smile. Oh, are you into me too? Jesus. I started baking with a heart full of wishes to make her happy. And everybody is like, what kind of like, pheromones do I have? However, since it was the first time I tried the recipe, I ended up making a small mistake. Seeing its distorted shape was heartbreaking. It was likely because I forgot to consider the rise of the cake while it baked. Oh no, I can never give this to Lady Katerina. Though only the sheep was awkward, it was meant to be a special cake for her. It was disappointing to make a mistake after so much hard work, but I wanted to bake a cake truly deserving of her approval. Since it'd be a waste to throw it away, I decided to eat it myself and learn from it. I began to measure out the ingredients again from scratch, but just then... What a delicious smell! Maria? Lady Katerina? To my surprise, Lady Katerina herself arrived in the kitchen. I quickly tried to hide the failed cake from view, but her nose was undeterred by my desperate attempts. Also, she's just gonna think you're trying to hide cake from her, and she's gonna think you're a bitch. Maybe that's why Katerina was always a villainess. She was like, you know what? That twatty little Maria, I was her friend, and she hid cake from me! I'm gonna ruin her life! You know. I, villains have had weirder motivations, okay? He led her right to the cake behind me. Is that cake? Wow, it looks delicious. And it's fresh out of the oven, right? I I would love to try it. Um, Maria, can I have a slice? Lady Katerina stared at the cake as she asked. I struggled to think of an explanation. It was true I originally made it for Lady Katerina. But even so, I considered it a failure. I was hesitant to have her eat what felt like scraps. If Lady Katerina says she wants to have a slice... While I struggled with my words, Lady Katerina shook her head and took a shaky step back away from the cake. I I'm sorry, Maria. I just noticed the gift wrap over there. You made this as a gift for someone, right? But then I said something inconsiderate just because it looked so delicious. I'm so sorry, Maria. Lady Katerina started to lower her head in apologies, so I hurriedly waved my hands. D don't apologize, Lady Katerina! Actually, I made this cake for you. What? For me? Yes, it always makes me happy to see you enjoying my desserts. So I wanted to try something fancier than usual. Yeah, all these girls are feeders. And as you can tell, it looks misshapen. I was going to consider it practice and bake you a new one. What? Misshapen? Where? Lady Katerina tilted her head in confusion. Maybe she didn't care about the shape that much. Nah, girl, listen. It may look like a, it may look ridiculous. It's kind of one of those like expectation reality kind of like here's the pretty unicorn cake that I tried to bake or like failed successfully. And then you see like the misshapen little lump that it is. And you're like, I bet it still tastes fucking great, though. Who gives a shit what it looks like? You know, and it probably almost looks exactly like that. You're like, see, I made the unicorn cake, but one eye is a fraction of a centimeter higher than the other. I'm such a failure. And it's like nobody but you would fucking notice that. 
Curious. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but did you say you baked this for me? Yes, I did. I nodded a little nervously, but Lady Katarina responded with a beaming smile. And then does that mean I can have it? Oh, of course, but are you certain? I mean, it's a misshapen cake. Oh, I don't think that's true at all. Anyway, I just can't resist this deliciously sweet scent. I want to dig right in. So if it's alright, I'd love to have a slice. May I? Lady Katarina looked at me with starry eyes. It reminded me of the time she kindly ate my cupcakes that had been knocked into the grass. Yeah, a little dirt done hurt. Back then she ate and ate without a single word of complaint. We absolutely, it's not because, hey, we're trying to show you what a good friend we are. It's literally because food. Grass is not going to deter us from cupcakes. She even apologized for eating so many. Maybe Lady Katarina remembered that too and was trying to do the same thing. More than anything, the way she waited for my permission was so cute that I couldn't help but smile. Now, there is a huge difference between slightly not perfectly round, i.e. Maria's version of misshapen, and they were knocked in the dirt. I ate them and they were knocked in the dirt, a tiny little off-center cake and not going to deter me, girl. Desire so eager to try my cake made me so happy. I nodded, a bit embarrassed. Yes, help yourself. Yay! Thank you! Lady Katarina took out a fork and plate from thin air and practically started to eat the slice before I'd finished cutting it for her. See, I always come prepared with, like, my own silverware and plates and shit, but, like, I ain't got plastic bags to take all this food home and put it in my pocket for later. She took a big piece and threw it into her mouth. A moment later, her eyes lit up, and we know what that looks like. The stars are... Mm, this is delicious! Maria, it's incredible! Lady Katarina continued to eat the cake like that without slowing down. Before he realized it, the cake shrunk in half to its ori shrunk, shrunk to half its original size. I couldn't tell what I was on a roll being able to read. Before he realized it, the cake shrunk to half its original size. I could no longer tell that it was misshapen when I first took it out of the oven. It's incredible. I really do love your homemade sweets, Maria. Lady Katarina happily ate my cake without while complimenting the taste. To me, the cake was an utter failure, but she was completely unbothered. The cake seemed to disappear even faster than usual. In the end, I was relieved to see she enjoyed the taste. Okay, like, listen, I got a sweet tooth, and I'm a little bit of a glutton, but Jesus Christ, an entire cake? I think I want to vomit right now. Unless it's a tiny mini one. <laughs> like, thank goodness Lady Katarina liked it. If she liked the cake, I'd make sure the next one was going to be absolutely perfect. Nothing motivated me more than Lady Katarina's smiling face as she ate. The next time it'd be neatly wrapped and both look and taste even better. I promised that to myself. I feel like her voice was totally wrong the whole entire time, but like, it's like really hard because like she can't be like totally like this, but like then she sounds too much like so. Like, listen, that hurt though. Because I have to do, like, a certain thing with my mouth in order to do it. And, my God, surprisingly, that actually hurts my jaw. Good Lord. Like, why do my jaw muscles hurt? Good exercise. I'm too tired to eat dinner. <laughs> Maria gives me a big smile. I feel a sudden urge to fawn, or, fawn over her. Maria's such an angel. That's an Atome game heroin for you. It has been about a year since I met Maria, the heroine of fortune lover. Although I met her more recently compared to the others, it feels as though we've always been friends. She seems more relaxed today. I'm glad. Yesterday she was boxed in by Set and Ryle and bombarded with questions. Today's crowd is much smaller. Marie is a commoner, so she's still unused to gatherings like these. I smile, seeing her looking more at ease. <laughs> Lady Katarina, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm just glad to see you enjoying yourself, Maria. Yesterday looked tough with everyone gathering around you. Lady Katarina, thank you for worrying about me. I'll do whatever is necessary. I wouldn't call it necessary, but considering Maria is such a hard worker, I'm sure she has her own reasons. Then you shall have my support. Thank you, Lady Katarina. Maria smiles gently, as radiant as ever. 
I smile to myself, thinking about my wonderful friends as I enjoy the Quidian cuisine to my heart's content. Still no pirate! Well, now we're Maria. Then you shall have my support. When Lady Katarina speaks those words, I feel a warmth radiate inside me. My very first and most precious friend upon entering the Academy. She was the only one who noticed my efforts. I want to be with Lady Katarina. From now on. For as long as I ever can. I think back to that day that Lady Katarina first defended me. I fondly recall how my feelings for her have grown ever since. Yeah, Jesus, everybody is fucking into me. Holy hell. Except for Sophia, she wants to hook us up with her brother, but... After entering the academy... Dirty commoner, you're only permitted to join the student council because of your light magic. Don't get ahead of yourself. Even on the academic test, you must have been given preferential treatment because of your magic. It must be why. No matter what I did, everyone always told me it was only thanks to my magic. Ever since the day my magic awakened, those rumors have followed me everywhere. If I could have given it all away, I gladly would have. I never wanted this, I thought, before noticing the noblewoman raising her hand. In her palm appeared a ball of flame. I'll put you in your place! I don't know which one was which, but whatever. I'd been slapped and had my feet stepped on, but no one ever harassed me with their magic. I stood there in a daze, merely staring blankly at the fire. It was Lady Katarina who came to my aid. I feel like Mer her voice just changed halfway through. Over. And then she said... Oh, we get a CG. Aww. What in the world do you think you're doing? Preferential treatment just for light magic? That's absurd. This academy is an absolute mediocr... Meritocracy. Wow. Absolute meritocracy. I can read. No one gets preferential treatment. Maria's been working hard the entire time. The test scores are the result of her hard work. Lady Katarina accepted me for who I was. I'd never cheat on a test. I only managed to do well by studying hard. But no one ever seemed to notice. I thought no one ever would. Yet, Lady Katarina saw it all. Yeah, we've also played the game, so. <laughs> the student council members didn't choose Maria because of her light magic. She's a hard worker who puts all of her effort into everything. That's why they all like her. Her words brought tears to my eyes. Before long, they streamed down my cheeks. From the day I gained light magic, everyone's always seen me as something different. No matter how hard I worked, they'd always attribute it to my powers or presume special treatment. Everyone saw me as the special girl with light magic. No one saw Maria Campbell. But Katarina wasn't like that. She liked Maria Campbell and wanted to be around her. That's why, even after I graduate, I wish to remain at Lady Katarina's side. After I first entered the Academy, I'd only wanted to graduate and return home to live a quiet life. But everything's different now. I want to be with Lady Katarina for as long as I'm able. Hey, Maria! This cake is delicious! I never had this fruit on top before! You have to try it too! Say, ah! Lady Katarina! Lady Katarina suddenly holds out a piece of cake to me. It surprises me, but seeing her smile makes me smile too. I don't know why I was just reading this as our, in our voice. Okay, wow. Anyway. See? Isn't it delicious? I seriously got so distracted. Because my bird is screaming like a raging douche hole downstairs, and I'm trying so hard not to tell him to shut his fucking face. It feels like he chirps and stuff and screams, but he makes his god awful like Aah! noise, and I want to choke him every time he does it. It's as triggering and as irritating to me as a baby screaming. Like I hate that. That's why I will never have kids. I don't like kids, and I hate that noise. It's not like you know this. Most of us like like oh the baby. I'm like smother it with a pillow. That's awful. Obviously, I would never do that. But, like, I just... It's triggering. It's like, shut it up. I can't stand that noise. I don't want to go protect it or shut... Oh, no, the baby... I want to be like, shut that fucking thing up. So when he makes that noise, it's like, shut your fucking mouth. So he's just been doing it. He'll usually do it once, but he just did it, like, seven or eight times in a row. He won't fucking stop. 
So I just got totally distracted with, do not yell at him, because then that makes him scream more. Like, fucking god, he won't stop. Being such a little cunt right now. Thank god we're almost done, but anyway. That's why I read it in my own voice, because I could not function for a minute. Hmm. Yes, very. If we can get some of this fruit, I can do some research to try and make it back home. Really? Thanks, Maria. Lady Katarina says that and goes right back to eating. This sight warms my heart. I'm a mere commoner without any right to stand alongside Prince Giordo, Lady Katarina, and everyone else. Lady Katarina's the daughter of a duke, so standing at her side would require equal social status. That's why I participated in this party. If I can improve my name in the social world, it'll be time well spent. I feel awkward and out of place, but I know this is an important opportunity. That's why I'm here. I have to pull myself together. I wish to gain the sort of status that would allow me to stay by her side. Lately, I'm considering the Department of Magic. I don't know the best course of action for my future, but I'm certain of my goal, if nothing else. Oh. We're back to being us. It's a little bit early, but we've got a couple parts over, and my bird is screaming like a douche hole, so I need to go deal with him. So, um, I'm gonna end this here. And we didn't get kidnapped by pirates again! Man, where's our pirate boyfriend? You know he's coming up soon, so. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up, and subscribe to see more!